Hey, what's up guys? It's Cypher. Welcome to Cypher Plays, my brand new channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of tips and shortcuts to help you win at Fall Guys. And hopefully, it takes you less games than Tim the Tatman to get your first win. Let's jump into it. Oh my god! Right off the start, we're gonna talk about Slime Climb. And a lot of people try to jump on this first yellow platform and you might wanna go for that, but it's a bit risky with how many people jump for it. You can just jump on the blue platform instead. Now over here, there's a little bit of a shortcut. You don't have to go all the way around the ramp. You can just jump onto this platform. Now, once you're at the donut, make sure you stay all the way to the right. You can even jump onto the blue platform directly and get a head start on everybody else. Now, once you work your way across, you can jump right back around. It's a risky jump, but once you practice it enough, you will make it and you can get right onto the slime. You can jump up right here to get on top. Over here, I like to make my camera angle sideways. That way I have a good view of the donuts. And then on this part, as long as one of your feet is touching the green platform, the balls that are swinging around cannot hit you and you'll be able to work your way to the finish line. Just make sure no other players try to grab you and push you off the platform. All right, guys, now we're moving on to Whirly Gig. This one is an easy level, but you can get caught in these windmills pretty easily if you're not careful. So right in the beginning, you want to lean towards the left side and let this first one hit you, and it's going to give you a pretty decent boost forward. Now, over here, a lot of people try to jump on the yellow, then jump on the blue, or they just mess up and they start climbing. The speed boost is here for a reason. You can actually speed boost up this ramp and jump and dive directly onto the blue and now over here this windmill you just want to make sure you time it right you walk through these other windmills are very easy just make sure you're timing your movement if you have to stop for a quick second like right here you take a little bit of a stutter step to make sure this other windmill doesn't hit you now this part is very crucial because you can get this middle jump 100 of the time all you have to do is go on the left side do not jump at this point you just want to dive and you're going to slide underneath the windmill it's not going to touch you at all you'll be able to go right through this checkpoint now the final jump uh it's a pretty easy jump but if you want to be fancy with it you can let the spinning wheel hit you on the left side and it's going to push you straight forward it might give you a little bit of a head start hopefully you guys learn a thing or two let's get to it okay now we're jumping into tiptoe this is one of my favorite ones in the start you just want to play it safe and stick with the pack let people do the guessing for you what you want to do is you want to pay attention to the end three rows of blocks right before the finish line the blocks actually shake if they are not correct so you can actually predict where the finish is going to be if you pay attention to the first three rows because those last three blocks are always connected so right as you get to the finish line there's going to be three blocks in a row that get you to the finish line so if you see a block on the second row you know for a fact that it's safe to just run and jump into the finish line because there's always going to be three blocks in a row towards the finish so if you pay attention and you see some of them shaking at the end but you see a few that are not shaking you can actually make that prediction for yourself and not have to worry about being in a huge group pushing you around all right, now we're jumping into Jinx. This one, it seems like a 50-50. It seems like you don't have a lot of control, but one thing that I like to do is if I'm not already Jinx, I will intentionally go get myself Jinx and start hunting people down on the other team. The one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to just be hiding the entire time because you're kind of leaving it up to your teammates to avoid being Jinx. And if you tag about five or six people on your own, you really increase your chances of making it to the next stage. All right, guys, now we're jumping in a jump showdown. You've made it through a bunch of stages. You're in the finals. Let's see what you can do to ensure that you're going to win a crown. So in this jump showdown, in the initial stage, you just want to avoid the spinning wheels, obviously, and the platforms are going to start falling down. Eventually, it's going to come down to just two platforms. You don't want to be stuck on your own. It's preferred to be on two platforms instead of just a single one, because if you're on a single platform, you end up having to make a jump. Now, if you catch yourself on a single platform, you have to make the jump. Make sure you go to the yellow part on the inner circle, and then you can just jump and dive onto a different platform. Now, at once this it's down to the final two platforms, you want to stay on the closer edge away from the inner circle because it gives you more room to move back and forward. You also want to be in the front, preferably, because it allows you to run backwards or run back forward after you make your jump. Uh, there's actually more distance to the outer circle. There's actually more distance. It gives you more room to jump over um, and time your jump easily. The jumps are actually not hard to pull off. You just don't want to jump while both are coming at you at the exact same time because that's how you end up 
uh, getting wiped out on this map. Eventually, there's going to be down. It's going to come down to uh, just about two of you. And one tip that I like to do is once I'm in the final, as the circle or uh, as the platform is coming towards me, I will grab my opponent. And you can cancel your grab with your own jump. So you can grab them right before the stick comes flying in, jump up, and a lot of times they're going to panic and end up getting wiped out, and you can get an easy crown just like that. All right, guys, now we're jumping into Hit Parade. Here, a lot of people try to platform on the blue and yellow parts, but you can actually just jump and dive off right in the beginning into the slime, and you're actually going to make it up the top just as fast, if not faster, than the people who stayed up top without risk of running into people or getting bumped off. Now you want to stick with the side that you're on. Uh, make sure you don't go through the middle blades because you can get caught in them from the other side of the team. Um, and you want to go all the way through to the end. Now on the swinging balls, it's pretty simple. You want to stick to one side. Here I'm on the right side. You can still get hit here only by a couple of the balls. So you got to make sure you just still pay attention to them. Now on the donut part, slime part, if you just stick all the way to the right or left, you're gonna be free to walk up this ramp. The donuts do not ever go all the way to the right or the left. You can run right up, an easy first place finish for you. Hopefully you learn a thing too about Hit Parade. If you guys are enjoying these tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to this channel. This is a new channel, Cypher Plays. We're gonna be posting a lot of Fall Guys content and other gameplay. You guys will find that about very, very soon. All right, now we're gonna be checking out Fruit Shoot. One thing you don't wanna do in the very beginning is you don't wanna jump off, lose your footing, and then just slide off the map. So sometimes what I like to do is I like to let the big wave of people jump off first, and then I'll make my jump and make sure I land in an open spot where I'm not going to break my ankles and fall off the map. At this point, you wanna to stick to the either right or left. It's gonna increase your chances of survival. You can actually use the little pink platforms as checkpoints and as a shield. So if you see something coming towards you, you can duck right behind the pink platform. As long as you stay on the right side or left side, it decreases your chances of getting hit by a piece of fruit and you can finish this and make it to the next stage. All right, now we're checking out rollout. This one can seem pretty intimidating, but it's actually one of the easiest stages. As long as you stay in the middle, you don't make any jumps that are gonna throw you off balance. Don't make any jumps at all. Walk back and forth between the platforms and try to avoid being in a large group. Anytime I've ever lost in this mode, it's because I've ran into somebody or they bumped me while I was making a cross from one color to the other. So as long as you make sure you're kind of isolated and you don't slide off the map and you don't make any jumps at all, this one can seem pretty weird at first. A lot is going on. But in reality, it's pretty simple and it's easy to make it to the next stage. All right, guys, now we're jumping into perfect match. This one is pretty easy unless you have terrible memory. And the first stage is just two different fruits. So just stand on one and memorize where another one is and you should be able to make it through. On the second stage, we have four different fruits. And as long as you stand on one, you just got to remember where three other ones are and repeat them in your head over and over and over. Banana, cherry, grape, watermelon. And then, you know, you kind of know where they are and you go for them. Now on the third stage, there's going to be six different options. This was where it can get a little bit tricky. But if you if you position yourself where you can see all the squares, uh, you can kind of get a better picture of where they're at. And, and as long as you remember four or five, it really increase your chances of survival. This one is pretty easy, especially if you have decent memory. Hopefully this helps you with perfect match. All right, guys, now we're going to jump into the tail grab modes. This includes the finals, the team mode and the solo mode. One thing you want to do is you want to understand that sometimes people are going to grab your tail from what looks like really far away. And I promise you, their hands are not that long. What's happening is there is a server desync in a lot of these maps where a player might look like they're far away from you, when in reality, they might be right next to you or actually in front of you. Another trick I like to do is I like to turn on usernames because you're able to see people through objects like wall hacks. In these game modes, it's not really even important to have a tail in the beginning. So a lot of times I'll just stay AFK the entire time. And at the very end, I'll go for a tail grab on a person who thinks that they're safe. You can also use the spinning uh, hammers in these modes to kind of give you a boost. Also guys, when you have a tail, your speed is the same as a player without a tail. So if you're chasing after somebody who has a tail and they're running a straight line and you're running right behind them, you will never catch them. So you always have to try to cut them off, take a little shortcut or go for somebody else who's running in a different direction to try to catch them. Hopefully this increases your chances of winning at tail tag. All right, guys, now we're jumping into Hoopsie Daisy. In this one, it's really important to control an area. I like to control around the conveyor belt because there's a lot of hoops that spawn there. 
But if it gets too contested, I'll either go to the other side or I'll go to the, the center spinning circle. And you also don't want to go for circles that people are already closer to them than you. You want to go for circles that you have a head start on. This is a team mode, so you do have to rely on teammates not being completely useless. But you can really carry a team uh, if you control a spot well and you really hunt down the circles, especially the gold circles that count for five points in just one jump. Okay, now we're jumping into gate crashers. This one is really important. The walls are going to go up and down. They're going to have different timings. If you see a wall that's already open, go towards one that's actually already closed because by the time you get to it, it's going to start opening for you. Uh, in this third stage or fourth stage right here, the doors on the far left and right have a completely different time than the one in the center. And they actually stay closed for a very long time um, and they don't open too too often so it's best to just go for the center ones and play it safe now on the last slide a lot of people mess up on this basically as you're sliding down if there is a door that is closed you want to lean towards there because by the time you make it to the bottom of the slide and you're ready to make your jump that door is going to start opening for you once you get the timing down and you understand the doors have different timings as well, this will be a very easy stage to clear and you make it on to the next stage. All right, guys, we're jumping into DoorDash and I'm not talking about the food delivery service. In this one, you just want to let the players who are brave enough to jump and test every door for you. So you don't want to be in the very back. You want to be somewhere in the middle. Let those players in the front jump and test every single door and you go through the opening. When you're going through the opening, you got to make sure you jump and you dive over the players. There's going to be a lot of people. You don't want to be pushed around and you don't want to get tripped up by the teeth and at the very very last jump uh you want to make sure you dive as you reach the peak of your jump that way you get the most air time and travel the furthest to get you a head start on the other players all right now we're getting to dizzy heights this one is pretty simple you just don't want to go against the current let these spinning wheels take you across go with the flow and just take the path that it takes you on if you try to fight against the path you're only going to end up falling behind now once you get to the ball stage these balls are really not that dangerous people play a little bit too scared around them you can actually hug just the right side of the, of the ball and avoid uh impact you go again through the spinning wheels these move a little bit faster towards the end so you just have to make sure you time your jump well go with the flow don't try to fight the current and then at the very very last one make sure you make this jump a lot of people forget that there's a jump at the end and once you're on the blue platform stick to the left or the right because the balls that are bouncing down are usually coming down just straight down the middle this one's pretty simple pretty easy hopefully you get through it all right now we jump into hexagon my favorite finals of all the finals this one is the most mechanically demanding you got to not panic. You got to stay calm in this mode. It's very important to be hyper aware of what's going on around you. People are going to be running around like crazy. What you don't want to do is you don't want to eat up too many of these hexagons without staying on top as long as you can. So you want to slow jump as often as you as you can. And also just jumping one time on each platform, you can actually jump really, really fast. But you can also jump really, really slow on top of these platforms. So there's different speeds to this. And if you master the very, very slow jump, you can really stay on top for a very, very long time. There's a few big pointers you want to know. If people are coming to cut you off, you got to have an escape plan. You got to know which way you want to go, but not just an escape plan on the platform that you're on. You also got to be aware of what's going on underneath you so that you don't fall through like three or four levels at once and end up, you know, dying while you had a great start. Also, you can jump pretty far in hexagon, even two and a half squares of hexagon space in the open if you time your jump you can dive onto hexagons one thing you got to be careful of is when you dive there's a few things one you can dive onto multiple hexagons and you're going to delete both of them at the same time what you do after you dive is you want to spam the jump key so that as soon as you get up you immediately jump up because if you jump too late after a dive you're just going to end up falling through the floor so spam your jump key it's not going to hurt you slow down your jump be aware of what's going on. You want to be slow jumping for the most part. The only time you really want to be running around like crazy is one, when you're trying to cut off a player to prevent them from getting more hexagons or two, if you have a space of hexagons, but there's an opening where a player could potentially jump on your hexagons and then slow jump until the very end and hope that you win. 
All right, guys, we've got another finals stage, Fall Mountain. I used to be really bad at this one, and it was pretty much a guaranteed loss for me every single time. But once you figure out the optimal path of traveling through this, you increase your chances of winning tremendously. You also don't want to be touching up against the, the spinner because what happens is if you hit the spinner before the ball gets there to spin it, uh, you actually end up falling down. Also, the cannons in the back, you can actually see them firing off the balls, so you can kind of be a little bit aware of when they might be uh, rolling down. Now, once you get to the second state, you want to try to do a little bit of an S-shape maneuver around them so that they don't touch you. Go through the middle of the first spinners, and then on the last spinner, all you got to do is hug far left, and the spinner will not touch you at all. Now, at the very end, it's very important that when you jump, you don't dive, you jump, and you grab the crown. You hit the grab button. One thing to remember, like I said, in the tail grab, there is desync in this game. So somebody who's in front of you might actually be right next to you or somebody who's behind you might be in front of you. Do not lose hope on this mode. Keep moving. Keep trying to follow the optimal path and hopefully you get that crown. All right, guys, we're jumping into Seesaw. This map kind of shows us that our human intelligence, our collective human intelligence is actually very, very low because a lot of people don't understand how Seesaws work, okay? Being in the middle of the Seesaw gives you the best chance of going right or left depending on which side is being pushed down. And you don't want to fall behind in this mode because if you fall behind, you might catch yourself in a situation like this where you, you know, you're on one side, the seesaw is all the way up. You don't really want to jump directly onto the seesaws because that could increase your chances of uh, falling down and tumbling. Um, so walking onto them is pretty optimal. Hopefully this helps you. I initially was really bad at this mode and lost a lot, but after practicing and kind of figuring out the jumps and uh, not falling behind as often, I'm able to finish this pretty much every single time. It'll take some practice, but you get the hang of it. All right, guys, now we're jumping into block party. This one is pretty easy, but it only gets pretty challenging when there's a lot of players uh, on this stage. So one thing you want to do is you want to, you know, make sure your camera angle is low so that you can see the platforms coming up. You also want to try to stay in the middle because if you're in the middle, you can work your way left or right pretty quickly. The one where you jump, you want to make sure you jump and try to make it to where you know you're going to land not on other people because if you land on other people that's where you end up tripping and falling and you could get caught uh, on the platforms that are sliding in the ones you have to jump off now if you get caught on one of those platforms do not panic do not try to run into them and do not just start spamming jump you actually have to run away from them towards the back edge once you get enough traction running away from them then you can jump back above them a lot of people panic when they get pinned and if you stay ahead of the pack and make sure no one's pushing you off the edge you should be fine and making it through block party it's a piece of cake all right, guys, Jump Club is pretty much the baby version of the Jump Showdown Finals. What you want to do in this one is you want to avoid running to other players and you want to move clockwise. You want to move with the spinning uh, circles. You stay closer to the inner part of the circle to allow you to wrap around a lot quicker. And then you just jump over the green one while the pink one is not close to it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. A lot of players who go out on this one don't know what they're doing. They're probably running counterclockwise. All right, guys, we got a couple team ones to go through. We got hoarders. This one, it's really important to have three balls. As long as you have three, you're guaranteed to win. And the goal of this one is just to not get last place. So if you notice a team that only has one or zero balls, prevent them from getting some. Uh, one thing you do is once you've collected three, you want to make sure you protect them by hanging out in these little hallway areas. That's where a lot of people try to push the balls out or in. And you can kind of uh, dictate who you know goes through and whatnot. <laughs> All right, guys, we got another team mode. We got egg scramble. These are pretty complex. And it's very easy to lose, especially if you're a solo player, but you can try to be effective. The best way to be effective as an individual player is defending the eggs that you guys have. If there's a gold egg in your base, you can hold the gold egg and pin yourself up in the back of the base and surround yourself with a bunch of other eggs so that when people come to grab you, they will end up grabbing the other eggs instead of grabbing the gold egg. And if you're in the corner uh, and they end up grabbing you and the gold egg goes flying, it's actually just gonna bounce up against the walls and fall right back into your base. Another th important thing is to stand on the, plat the, the platform, the middle platform at the very top. You can kind of block people who are trying to take eggs away from you. Like I said, in the other team modes, it's important not to get last place because most of the times the team that's in third place is gonna get teamed on by the team that's in first and second to ensure that they won't get third. 
Okay, we got another team mode called Rock and Roll. In this one, you want to push the ball through the maze of obstacles, and uh, you can get through most of them. At the very end, the, the long pillar ones, you have to go around them. So if you're a smart player, make sure you're pushing either right or left. Most of the team should be pushing the ball. One or two players can go out ahead and try to block the other teams from getting their ball across. One thing that's really important in this mode is if there's one person trying to hold back your ball, instead of pushing against them, which is very counterproductive, just go grab them. As soon as you grab them, your teammates can push the ball for you and you're able to clear through. As long as you are not in dead last, you'll be able to make it to the next stage. All right, guys, another team mode to finish this off. We got fall ball. In this one, you want to make sure that you start off on defense because you don't know what teammates you're playing with. They could be very good players. They could be awful players. After you get a feel for your teammates, you can start playing a little bit more offensively. Um, and you want to make sure you time your jumps against your opponent's jump. So if someone's going to jump and hit the ball towards you, you want to time it to where you're just slightly jumping after they jump to head it back in their direction. Another quick tip is after you score, the ball is gonna come back to the middle. If you time it, you can actually lob that middle ball all the way into their goal uh, right from the start to farm up some easy points. Also, if you are losing in this mode, do not give up. There is a rare gold egg that spawns in this mode. And if you score that egg, it counts as five points. So always play to the end because you never know when that gold egg will spawn. Thank you guys for watching my Fall Guys tips, tricks, and shortcuts. Hopefully this helps you get your first crown or stack up as many crowns as you need. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. This is a new channel. There's going to be a lot of videos coming out. Um, I'll have the second upload, third upload over here if you're watching this in the future. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time.